In today's episode, we're speaking to Jacob Holm. Jacob is the co-founder of uh, Strata Trading. At Strata Trading, they create profitable trading EAs, i.e. expert advisors. You can use his EAs without any hands-on experience of trading. He bought his first stock when he was 14 years old and only to see the, co the company went bankrupt. Now, more than 20 years later, he's still in business and he's now a trader and an investor, applying both manual and automated strategies. Additionally, he is an entrepreneur and, has, and runs many other companies. Previous to this, he was working for Manchester United and Google. Let's speak to Jacob and find out how he changed his, um, changed his life by changing his mindset. Let's find out. And remember, if you want to upgrade your money mindset, then click on the link www.millionairefoundations.com and watch my free training. Welcome, welcome. This is Gul Khan, your money mindset expert. And I'm so excited. Today we have the amazing Jacob Holmes. Welcome, Jacob. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for coming today, Jacob. Jacob, everyone's heard your intro. They've heard how fabulous you are. But please, in your own words, tell everybody what it is that you do. Well, first of all, well, thanks a lot for, for having me here on your show. I really appreciate it. Uh, and looking forward to speaking with you for a long time. So basically, I come from. Uh, I'm originally from 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 Denmark, so I'm I'm Danish, and I've born and raised here. And um, but but before to... we before we go into that detail, Jacob, please tell everybody in your own words what it is that you do. Right now, today, I run a company called Statero Trading, where we uh, help people get started with the uh, automated trading. Uh, so that can be both seen as, as trading and investing, but basically it's for everybody, people who struggle, who wants to get into to trading and investing, but don't have the time. They maybe have a full-time job. They might be entrepreneurs. They might have other passions that they are really passionate about and really want to get into trading and investing, but don't want to dedicate all the hard work that's needed to get into it. Then we help them with, with our, our services and offerings and they can still get into trading and investing without basically doing that much they just need to set it up and, and then we will help them get started wonderful okay so now talk us through how did he get into trading how did he end up you know providing this kind of service and you just mentioned before that you are you know you're from Denmark you're still living in Denmark so talk us through your journey of, of becoming a mentor for traders and how did you get into trading well it's a uh... It's, it's a good question because it's a little bit of a, not a very straight line to, to the answer. But, but the thing is, I started out after school, after bachelor and, and master's degree, I started out in, in, in corporate life, working with, with marketing and strategy and, and sponsorships and stuff like this in, 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 in the corporate market. But then one day after, long story short, I decided that now it was time to, to start for myself. I started out with my own company, uh, did a lot of years with my own company and still did that. But then on the side, I started trading for myself, just as many traders do with manual trading, you know, doing the entries and exits yourself and everything. And then I just got hooked on it. Uh, but it was a, a long, long journey going from that to where I am today. But it was because I met a friend at a, a wedding. Mm -hmm. And this friend, he was, uh, he was, at that time, I was only investing. I was long-term investing, so not really doing anything. But he was yes. actually, actually so, trading. So be, because I'm a, uh, I am I'm an investor too. Um, I'm going to interject here and just quickly give a definition to our audience. So a day a, a day trader or a short-term trader is somebody who's who's looking to make short-term gains and it treats it like a job. It treats it like a way to make money to live off. When you are investing for the long term, which Jacob just mentioned, and that's the, the strategy that I've currently adopted, you you invest and you forget about it, and you just you you monitor it, you know, maybe quarterly or annually or six monthly, whatever your plan is and whatever your strategy is, but you don't buy and sell on a regular basis. You buy and you just you you sort of weather the storms. And so, for example, my crypto investment is in such a way that it's now declined by some of them, but in some of my my coins are low, as low as minus 98% from the point I bought. But I'm not bothered because I know they'll go back up and um, it's a long-term investment. And overall, there's a win, but that's just because that's a, um, crypto is a very risky environment. Whereas my whereas when it comes to shares and ISIS and so for it's the same thing. It's a long-term investing. So 
And the people confuse the two. And I want to give a distinction. There's a there's people who invest for the long term, and that's investing. And yes. trading means you are buying and you're you're looking to buy entries and exit entries depending on daily or a, you know maybe three week or you know, a few days short term or to medium term but it's where you're looking to make short term profit to make so to supplement your income your 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 income and it's more of a way to make money rather than actually grow your money so does that make sense that yeah, makes perfect perfect sense to me and thank you very much for filling in the details brilliant and uh, yeah yeah so i i was only an investor at that point when i met this this guy and he was a trader so then he got me into trading and then I started trading myself and I loved it. I absolutely loved it together with my investing as well. Mm -hmm. But then also during the years when I was trading, I also found out, okay, I, I really love this, but it also takes a lot of my time. Yes. It takes a lot of my emotions away from other things I could be doing. And, you know, sometimes I thought I should be happy, but, you know, then in the background, I still had this trading and I thought there must be something else that could, you know, do something, improve this situation. So of course I read a lot of books. I took a lot of courses on mindset and psychology within trading. And that improved my mindset a lot, but still I spend a lot of time on trading every day. And you know, how could I do this better? You know, and I had some people that I traded together with. And then at one point we started to learn more and more about automated trading. And then we found out that we could actually get the best from both worlds. Mm -hmm. So in the sense that we could actually get trading but we didn't have to sit in front of the charts each and every single day because we could automate the strategies that we were trading so that's when we started together me and my partner today to automate our strategies so we could actually be out be with friends be with family be on holiday while our strategies were still working in the background by being automated and still do the, doing the trading for us mm. so that's where i am today where I basically I can be out with my friends or family, you know, be on holiday or whatever, but my automated trading still sits and, and do all the trading for me because we have coded it to do the trading for us. I still, I have to say, I still do some manual trading because that's just because I love it, mm -hmm. but not as any, any, anything nearby what, what I did earlier. I know this, this is amazing. Cause I, I mean, I, I know what you mean. I loved trading, but it, when I first started, I got it's it's very it's it's very easy to get hooked on and it mm -hmm. takes your attention away from everything else and um and you and I think most people get so hooked on it they over trade and so when you over trade you give away your profits that's the reason why I pulled away because I was making money but I kept giving more money than I was making because I would <laughs> over trade and there were trades that I wouldn't or shouldn't be taking but I was taking and I because I spent so many hours on it but plus that also took up time away from my kids and my my other businesses and whatever else and I found myself really drained in there and I realized I'm not I think you're it's great that you love trading and I'm glad you found it but I think there are people whose personalities are and they are not suited to trading because the emotions they, they first of all they cannot regulate the emotions and two um if they, if someone is really like me like when I give when I get into something I really give my all like I'm 100% yeah. passionate and I really get into it I think that's a wrong um, archetype for trading. I don't know if there is an archetype for trading and I'm just thinking about it mentally because I think, I think my personality is not, even though I'm brilliant at numbers because I've, I've been, that's what I thought, oh, this trading is best for me because I'm, I'm brilliant at numbers. I love graphs and I can work things out. And da, da, da. But where I failed, I think, to make a success out of it, out of trading as a business, investing great, but trading was because my personality, I don't think is suited towards it. I get too excited and too heavily involved yeah. And whereas a, when you invest or when you trade as well, they're both, I think the both mindsets required for, for both uh, are equally the same. You have to be detached. You have to be very calm about it. And I get very excited and very passionate about things yeah. I do. Yeah. So therefore, <clears throat> my conclusion was I have the wrong personality. Now, tell me, how do you not get excited? How do you, how do you keep yourself calm? How do you maintain that? I have to be here. I have, I, if, if I love, if I lose, I can't be there. If I win, I can't be here. I have to be, remain neutral. And overall, that's the best place to be because overall then you make profit. How do you get to that point? <laughs> wow. It has taken me years to get to that point. It's, it, it's, it has taken me years and thousands and thousands of hours working on my own mindset. Um, it, it, it's, it's one of the biggest challenges you can ever encounter as a trader. So it mm -hmm. was a great, great question because in the beginning I was totally like you, whenever I won, 
great, right? I was totally excited. Whenever I lost, it was I could go, you know, two days and really struggle with that and my emotion. And it, it could be like that for years, right? Yeah. But then slowly you start to realize something is wrong here. It shouldn't be this not supposed to be like this right then you start to to take a lot of courses uh you know in my case i took a lot of courses on mindset psychology within trading then i um i was in different trading groups where there was some some trading mentors who i could could spare with they could help me out with my mindset and, and pick up my flaws say okay you need to improve that you can watch out your your language there don't say that don't think that uh try to improve that so i was working on that every time then I read a lot of book, not just on trading, but on other areas which could help me as well. For instance, I've read a lot of books uh, about stoicism, the, mm -hmm. the philosophy stoicism. I've read a lot of books um, from, for instance, Dalai Lama, Thich Nhat Hanh, which is uh, Buddhists, more or less about Buddhism, right? And, and their philosophy. Those approaches to life, both stoicism and, and, and Buddhism, are, are very similar, right? But it was all concepts and tools that for mindset that I could use in my everyday life and in my trading. At the same time, I started based on all of this, I started to, to meditate and use mindfulness practices as well every single day. Mm. So all of these things added up over the years, over the years. And at the same time, trading made me put me, you know, spot on every single day. And so I could practice what I learned. And then with years of training, practice training practice i i came to the stage where i could i wouldn't say there will always be some kind of emotions when you're trading and there should be because we are not robots we can yeah. create robots but we are not robots but you should as long as you are aware that you have these emotions and can then say okay i have these emotions but these emotions are not me it's just emotions that come up i can detach from them as long as you're aware about that and then can be level-headed that's the state you want to be at. And it took years, but, but that's how I came to where I am today. I can imagine. Now, let's talk more about how you, at what point did you let go of your business company? For, I mean, you, you went through two, from what I'm understanding, you've gone through stages. You were in the corporate world, you let go of the corporate world and started your own company, and then you let go of the company and went full-time trading. Is that how, how it happened for you? Is that, am I correct? Almost. Uh, just a little correction. I, I left the corporate world to do my own company. Then I started trading on the side. And then actually, I still have my own company. Right. But at the same time, I, I I started another company together with my trading partner, which is about trading and investing. Okay. Now, the, let's talk about the jump from being a corporate employee to being a, a CEO of your own company. Yeah. How did you make that transition? Did you, you know, did you have some buffer zone? Did you have some money on the side? Or how do you make the plunge? Because that's a huge plunge for a lot of people to let go of the corporate job and start running their own business. How did you make the transition? It was a, it, it, like, it was a great place of work before. Uh, I really enjoyed it. But at the same time, what did it for me was that I wanted freedom to decide for myself, like more freedom to decide where I wanted to be, when I wanted to work, what I wanted to work with, um, you know, being location independent and so on, right? I knew it came with, with, with a big risk of, yeah, I, I, I wouldn't get the, the normal regular salary that you get in a corporate job or any other nine to four or nine to five job. But for me, the freedom was, was the, the main factor that made me say, okay, I really want to take this jump and I don't want to sit when I'm 90 years old and, and regret that I didn't try it. I can always go back, you know, it's, it's no problem. So why not just take the risk and then see how it goes? Um, so that's what bro brought me over, over the fence, so to speak. But how did you let go of that, the false security I think people have, you know, that I get monthly paycheck from there and, you know, that's a secure, safe way to make money. There isn't any security. They can let go of you tomorrow and you won't have a job. But exactly. most people have this, and um, you know, people who are used to employment, they have this false sense of security in, in the job. How do you let go of that 95 mentality, that, that the security, the false security that people have? It wasn't never really a big problem for me because I've never been very attached to the money side of things from a mm -hmm. corporate job uh, because I, I, I've never lived a life where I've, I've been spending a lot or put myself in, in debt with, so I need to pay a lot of mortgages or stuff like that. So I wasn't really in that 
way dependent on it or attached to it. I always try to to just detach myself from things because it is just things, right? So in that sense, it, it wasn't the money side of it wasn't really a big risk because I I always had in in my back mind that I knew that if something goes wrong, I can always go back. It, it it's not the end of the world. It, it it's only it's, it only opens new opportunities for me. I, I saw it as a new opportunity. Saw it as, as as something to explore. Um, and, and then get you know many experiences wiser and uh, and improve myself in that way. Awesome, awesome, awesome. All right, so talk us through your you know when you were setting up this automation. Now, you you help people with their you know with their trading. That puts a lot of responsibility on your on your shoulders because people are spend use you know people are are going to be using their hard earned savings and so forth. How do you do mentally deal with that responsibility of mentoring and helping people trade, knowing too well that they could lose as well as make money? Yeah. First of all, we, have, we of course, make people aware about this, that, that trading and investing, no matter how you do it, who you do it with, where you do it, always comes with a risk. So, mm-hmm. so people who, who sign up for this, they, they already, at least we, we do our best to, to tell people about this risk and, and they should be aware about it. That being said, the way we can be comfortable about doing you know offering the service that we do is that we have it, it's not something we take very lightly just to, to put out this service it's something that we have spent years and years and years first of all developing our own skills to where we are today then second of all the, the strategies that we have developed today is we have spent thousands of hours testing both in testing mode and in live live environment so we know the stats of what we are doing and based on that we have a high, high probability that's, that this over the long term will work out. We don't say this will work from if you start one month and then the next month you're, you're rich. It's not nothing like that at all. We are not a get rich quick scheme here. It's in the long term, right? And we know based on all our testing, all our live trading, all our experience that this will work out in the long term. So having that confidence from all of this work makes me confident. Uh, so basically to answer your question, it only comes with just, I think, like in many other sports or other jobs, you know, you get more confident the more work you do because you know, you know how to do it, you know, all the ins and out of it, right? So you get more and more confident. Perfect. I love that answer. I think confidence comes with experience, and experience yep. comes with failures. So you've done the work over a number, number oh, yeah. of years, and experience oh, yeah. the failures and learn from them to yep. be in a position now to hold that experience. And this is what allows you to be confident in your ability to help people. I think that's very, very important. I think that no, nothing can be replaced. Nothing can replace confidence. And there's this. I always said there's two things. There's the confidence that comes from actually. You know, having validation, external validation, and this confidence that you develop as you develop your skills, you begin to develop something called self confidence, which is even if it's a new territory, you don't you don't have the external validation that you've done it, but you have the self confidence like I've done so many other things, I can do this as well, I can yeah. go for it, and I'll I'll learn the process, I'll have the skills, I'll do whatever is required to be able to make this a success, and that's when you begin to develop true confidence, which I think is self confidence, which is having the confidence to do something even when you don't have the external validation to prove that you can. And I yes. think this comes with what, and, and this is what's, what I'm hearing from you, that you've had so much experience that when you were looking to mentor other people in developing this new platform, you, when you first started, you didn't have external validation that it would work, but the, everything so far had given you the confidence to develop the self-confidence that this new thing would work too, because you put all the hours and you've tested it so much, which I think is brilliant. I think that's how people need to approach life. They can't get the, the, this, you know, this idea of fake it till we make it. I don't think it exists. I don't think it's real. You have to have some success to, in order to have that confidence from external validation to start building self-confidence in your ability to do things which you don't have validation for. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Awesome. So on that note, we're going to wrap this up. Do you have any parting comments, Jacob, for somebody who's looking to start a new venture or who's looking to start their life or who's looking to go into trading? Passing comments about that. I would say if, if you want to trade uh, yourself manually, please go ahead. It's, it's, it's amazing. I love it as well. However, if you want to still have some life, still have some time with your family, look into see how you can maybe do some investing. You know, you can trade ETFs. You can, you know, look into mutual funds or whatnot. Or you can look into automate your trading. You can do it yourself. You can look into services for us. Um, just please be aware that it's, you might hear a lot of stories that you can, what you can do from one day to the other, but this is, this is like, like if if you want to be a 
become a doctor, right? You don't go out and operate another person within, you know, a month or, you know, two months. This takes years before you can actually operate on the next person. It's the same with trading, no matter how you are going to do it, automated, manual, or even investing. You don't become a superstar within a month or two. This is a business that takes time, a lot of effort, a lot of work, sometimes blood, sweat, and tear, tears. And, uh, but, but if you persist, then, uh, at the end of the day, you, you can succeed. You can. Wonderful. And so on that note, we're going to wrap this up, Jacob, Jacob, tell us, how can we connect with you? Where can we find you on the internet? Well, uh, me and my business partner have a website called the uh, statira trading.com. And if, uh, people want to look a little bit more into automated trading there and, but not sure if, if it's for them. So then they can go. I'll give you the link here right now. You, 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 if, if you give it the link, we'll, we'll put this on the show notes anyway. Okay. So it's statuatrain.com slash EA guide. Wonderful. So if you are listening to us on the podcast, the links Jacob just mentioned would be on the show notes. And if you're watching the YouTube, then down below in the description section, we'll have the links that Jacob just mentioned. Go check him out. Um, I, I definitely will because I think I'm looking. I'm looking for an automate um, um, an AI program that can help me automate my trading. I'm looking to get back into trading, but I don't want to spend hours doing it. So I'll be checking their uh, platform out. So you go ahead and do that too. And so now, thank you so much, Jacob, for coming on on Friday Feature and talking to us. We will have to have you back and have a deeper conversation about trading on Wednesday, the Money Talkies. But for now, thank you so much. Thank you very much, Gula. I appreciate your time. And thank you for listening to me and Jacob today on Friday Feature. I will be back with another amazing guest finding out how they change their life by changing their mindset. Until the next time you meet, this is Girl Khan signing off. Take care and bye for now.